you can certainly say I for one can certainly say we really appreciate what Eric does. Um, you know, it's a lot of work. I don't know how he does it Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So anyway, I'm still recovering from yesterday, so I'm a bit uh, bit tired. But we want to do uh Eric asked me to do a basic um overview of right division and uh that's good because i'm just a basic kind of person so hopefully we'll have a good time in the word tonight and um we're probably not going to say anything you don't already know but you know it's always good to reinforce everything uh that we learn and to hear it again and to go over it and to look at it in a kind of a panoramic view. So I want to start off by reading uh, a verse together, kind of an unusual verse to uh, start uh, talking about right division. But let's turn to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. Nope. Hopefully we can tie everything together tonight and uh and that we'll have a better uh understanding of the scripture so hebrew chapter hebrews chapter one verse one god who at sundry times in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets god who at sundry times so in different times in diverse manners, various ways, diverse ways, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Uh, let's turn over to Second uh, to Second Timothy. <clears throat> Second Timothy, chapter two, verse fifteen. It feels funny. I feel like I should be talking into the microphone. It's it's over there. So can you still hear me when I put my head down? Okay. Uh, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Over the page, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, 2 Timothy 3. Verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. So, you know, I was thinking of that, that statement in, in Hebrews uh the last few days and i was thinking god god who at sundry times and diverse manners spake and when you think about uh the god of heaven the god of creation uh to communicate with us and to uh let us understand uh what he's doing uh you know to think when paul writes in Ephesians, uh, Ephesians chapter 3, uh, uh, unto me, sorry, uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8, unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. So when we think of, of the Apostle Paul, when we get to the end of our study, uh, verse 10 says, uh, be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. Now to think that we're on this earth and in our bodies and before us, we have the word of God. Uh, that god has communicated with us and when you think of where can we find uh 
I was thinking of what we find in the scripture. The Bible gives us revelation. Uh, it tells us about creation. Uh, it tells us uh, about humanity. You know, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, rightly dividing, even the joints and marrow. Uh, it tells us of sin. Uh, it tells us of hope. Uh, future glory of our savior and then i was thinking of uh, the authority of scripture and as right dividers and as bible believers uh i've been i've been saved since i was a young boy but uh rightly dividing for i guess almost five years now uh the authority that, like the conference, you know, some of us were listening to a bit of the conference on the weekend. Everything that is said, and Eric and all the teachers that we listen to, they always back up what they're saying with scripture. Uh, unfortunately, Christianity today, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's sort of one verse and then a half an hour of stories. Uh, and spiritualizing. I, Benoit sent that uh, uh, little email there about spiritualize and spiritualize. You know, uh, and that, you know, and then they have the, what, the 7-Eleven songs, you know, uh, seven words, 11 times, right? So that's, that's where churchianity is today. But as right dividers and those of you who are on this uh, Zoom call tonight, uh, we've come to understand, and it's not a, a pompous thing or, a, you know, like we know better than them. You know, actually, uh, I find it very humbling to have the understanding and been brought into the understanding that... Uh, I feel very privileged that we understand the scripture. And the thing is to try to share that with others. Some don't want it. Uh, most of the people in my Christian circles from before don't want it. Uh, but when you think of uh, John Verstegen was saying on the weekend, you know, you think like, okay, well, we bow to the authority of scripture. We bow to the King James Bible that we hold in our hand. Uh, we rightly divide. <laughs> you know, I mean, it gets thinner and thinner. So, you know, there's not a huge mega churches of right dividers, right? So, and I think we have to remember right division. Uh, I don't know if you know anything about Lewis Berry Chafer, but, you know, he wrote a whole the whole uh he was a dispensational believer acts two and you know he wrote uh, commentaries based on a, a system of understanding uh other preachers and teachers of the past and a lot of them are you know uh from way back were covenant teachers and i don't know if you know anything about uh church history but uh darby schofield uh clarence lark and these men uh, they did not invent dispensational teaching uh they rediscovered it they brought it to the forefront and then men like jc o'hare and uh cr stam uh men who came a little further in the understanding so when we look when we talk about right division, it's not a system to understand the Bible. It's basically taking the Bible that we just read about in, in 2 Timothy, that is, is doctrine, reproof, correction. There's a God-given, uh, as Richard Jordan says, a God-given uh, way that God has given us to understand the scripture. So tonight, we're going to try to build we're going to build a chart to give an overview. We're going to we're going to pull the camera back, uh, not this camera literally, but the camera of our mind, and 
and look at the Bible from uh, kind of a bird's eye view. So <clears throat> first thing we we want to we understand we bow to the authority of scripture. Scripture is is settled forever in heaven. We read that in Psalm 119. Uh, it's it's a uh, light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path, a light unto our feet. So and the Lord Jesus Christ, he was the word that was made flesh and dwelt among us. So not only what the word of God is for us, uh, 66 books, uh, approximately 40 authors over 1,500 years, Genesis to Revelation. When you think of, of, of how these men wrote the scripture, guided by the Holy Spirit, everything is perfectly... Um, brought together but if you're like me you have some questions or you wouldn't be rightly dividing so let's just look at two verses to demonstrate something and then we will uh, progress with our lesson <clears throat> let's look at Matthew <clears throat> uh, Matthew uh, chapter 20 verse 28. Matthew 20, verse 28. Matthew 20, verse 28, and it says, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Now let's look at uh, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter uh 1 Timothy chapter no I meant 2 Timothy that's why I'm having a problem 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth for there's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So who will have all men to be saved? And I remember my wife and I, uh, you know, as we were studying the scripture, you know, we'd, we'd come to verses like this and say, well, like, why does it say many? Like, I mean, the Lord Jesus Christ came to die for all. Why, why many? And so when you start seeing apparent contradictions in the scripture uh there's two ways of handling it you either spiritualize it and try to get around it like some of the verses in hebrews or you try to understand it completely and figure out what the lord's trying to say to us uh you'll remember from yesterday's lesson that we talked about the different you know historical and and um I can't remember what I preached. Uh, the historical, um, spiritual, and the doctrinal uh, aspects of each part of the Word of God. So the whole thing with right division, what we're trying to do tonight is to understand that God speaks differently in different ways. So that's why dispensational Bible study uh, is so important, because dispensational Bible study is looking at the scripture unlike the covenant uh, teacher, uh, you know, like uh, people who don't recognize uh, two gospels, for instance, that we're going to see tonight. Uh, they will say, well, the whole Bible is is for us, and but we're going to understand, but you don't see them out, you know, sacrificing uh a lamb uh so obviously something has changed right so let's let's start off let's start our our journey together okay let me just get my pens here so let's read a verse together first of all in genesis 1 genesis chapter 1 verse one 
In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Let's look over at uh, chapter 2, verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the knowledge but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou shalt eatest, thou shalt surely die. So we see that uh, man is in the garden. Uh, verse, sorry, chapter one, back down to verse twenty-six. Uh, let us man make. Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle of all the earth, over every creeping thing, and so on. So, the first thing we come to in our Bibles is a man called Adam and his wife called Eve. Two instructions are given to them. First of all, they are given the dominion over uh, the earth. And second of all, they're not the eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So I'm going to turn around here and we're going to write down the bottom here, Adam. And he has been given dominion. So that's the first thing we read in the scripture. We read about the heaven and the earth, and we read about a man and a woman called Adam. They're made after the image of, of God. Let us ma make man in our image and our likeness. And so, and they're given uh, an instruction not to eat of the tree. So, God dispensed information to Adam. Then, when we go on so the whole idea of right division is that god's progressive revelation over time that god is not dispensing and working in the same way now those who are against right division will say will use the verse in hebrews where it says jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever and that's true. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forever. But the Lord Jesus Christ is not the same. Uh, he doesn't operate the same as he did in the Old Testament when we see him coming. And, you know, we see like the one like unto the Son of Man in the in the furnace, in the fiery furnace. Uh Paul, we're going to read later that he knows, doesn't know Christ after the flesh. Peter knew Christ after the flesh. And where is Christ today? Christ is in heaven in a glorified body, the first fruits of all creation. So he is the same in essence. He is the same, but God has spoken in different ways. And as we read in diverse manners, he, he spake in time past. So in time past, we have Adam. Uh, so we're going to cover a lot of human history here. So then we come, I guess, the next the next big one, if, if we want to call it big, uh, is uh, found in Genesis chapter 9. And it was pretty big because <laughs> it was a big flood. So... Okay, uh, Genesis one, uh, nine, uh, Genesis chapter nine, verse one. And God blessed Noah and his. Sorry, that isn't what I want. Uh, uh, sorry, wrong. Oh, right. Sorry, chapter six, verse eight. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So we see this man, and God is going to speak to him. Verse 14, and God said unto Noah, and the end of all flesh has come before me. So verse 14, make thee an ark of gopher wood. 
room shalt thou make in the ark and shall pitch it within and without. So we have now uh, another set of instructions given to another person. Uh, and we know that, uh, you know, God is going to uh, purge the earth with a, with a worldwide flood. So Noah. And the information that was given to him was to build, right? Build an ark. And then we also, when he comes out of the ark, that's why I was going to uh, chapter 9. Uh, and uh, verse, chapter 9, verse 1, And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. And there's a covenant. We first time we come to the word covenant, uh, chapter nine, verse eleven, uh, and I will establish my covenant with you. Uh, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there be any more a flood to destroy the earth. And this is the token of the covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature that is in you for perpetual generations. Verse 16, and the bow, the rainbow shall be in the cloud and I will look upon it and that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every everlasting, ev and every living creature. Verse 17, and God said unto Noah, this is the token of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. So we have the rainbow and a covenant. Then we, as we progress and we see that different in information is being uh, dispensed to various uh, people in the, in the scripture, Let's turn to uh, to Abraham, and we find him. He shows up now in Genesis uh, chapter 12. So we see that the world, we know about the Tower of Babel, and, you know, we don't want to make the chart too complicated. But uh, chapter 11, the one... The earth it was of one language, one speech. They started to build a tower and let us make a name and so on. And then out of this, this problem, uh, God decides to call out a man. And the Lord said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. Genesis 12, verse 2. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. Now, this is the covenant here. Uh, verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 7. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Unto thy seed I will give this land. So, we see we have Abram. Abraham. So <clears throat> a seed, a seed line and a land. And then eventually in chapter 17, we'll have uh, uh, circumcision. So Abram. It's called out. His name is changed to Abraham. <clears throat> God promised that he's going to make a great nation. And in him and through his seed, uh, all the nations of all the families of the world will be blessed. And, of course, we know Isaac. We're not going to we're just going to hit the high points, you know, uh, Jacob and Isaac and so on. Then we come to the next one I want to look at is uh Moses. So we see that 
Uh, let's go over to uh, Exodus 4.22. I hope you can see where I'm going with this as we build this chart. Um, so we see that Moses raised up. And uh, I want you to notice uh, chapter 4, verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, this, thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. So we see that God has called out Abraham. And if you notice, we read the first verse we read was in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, if you notice that. Uh, so far, all of the history that we've been reading about right now is to do with the earth, is to do with, uh, you know, the Adam, then the flood, <clears throat> then Abraham being called. And now we have Moses and a people. So I'm going to put Moses here. And then we have uh, the lamb, Passover lamb. And as we go through human, you know, it's amazing. Like the first 2,000 years of our scripture, uh, you know, and it ends with uh, the flood. And now we're going to see human history starting with Abraham and Abram. And how long that takes. So that's the, another large chunk of our Bible. So the first 12 chapters. And then from Abraham on. All the way to the end of uh, our four Gospels. Uh, concerning to, uh, with Israel. So Abraham, uh, Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses. Uh, Now, there's a couple of promises made, and, you know, let's turn over to Exodus 19. And it's amazing to me that when you, when you start putting this together, uh, how that it makes so much sense. Uh, Liz and I were sitting at, at dinner, I was just going over what I was going to say tonight with her, and I was saying, you know, like, you know, sweetheart, how, how did it take us? Why did we not see this before? You know, like, why do we not see right division before? And so we kind of said, we looked at each other. I said, well, I guess it's our fault. We, we relied on others who are teaching us and we respected those men. Uh, and uh, I guess, you know, we should have been like a Berean and check the stuff out ourselves. But anyways, uh, Exodus 19. And I'm sure many of you on the call tonight, you're, you know, you're probably in the same boat thinking, well, why didn't I see this? Anyway, now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all the people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before them, their faces all the words which the Lord commanded. And all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord had spoken, we will do. Uh, unfortunately, you know, that uh, was going to be a problem. Uh, and too bad at that point, they wouldn't have said, we can't do this on our own. We need help. But. They said, okay, we're, we'll, we'll do it. So we have the law. So we have the covenant of the law that entered in. So now we see that uh, Israel, uh, and, and as we think of this, God has called out Abraham and all the nations of the world, all of, sorry, all the families of the world will be blessed. And God wants to use uh, a people. He wants to use Israel, my son. He wants them to be the light of the world to uh, 
for all the blessings to flow through Israel. So we got to remember that when we get to uh, Paul. So, uh, so then the word, you know, Israel's history goes on, and then the next big, uh, the next uh, big communication to man was through David. King, and the message to David was that his throne would be an everlasting throne, and that uh, there was a promised kingdom. So we have a land, we have a seed and a land, and then we have the promised kingdom. Uh, so we won't spend a lot of time on David. Uh, but we know that uh, David was a man after God's own heart. And uh, maybe we should just read the, uh, the covenant made with David. <clears throat> so <clears throat> this, when you look at these covenants, the Noahic covenant was uh, unconditional. It was one-sided. God said it and that it would be so. Uh, Abraham, unconditional one-sided god said promised a seed and a land uh unconditional david the king throne would be forever but this covenant made with moses when the law came in it was an if then proposition so if they did what god asked them to do they would be blessed and unfortunately, a lot of Christianity, churchianity, is living that way today. But as we're going to find out in the day of grace, uh, it's grace that is poured forth without the law, without any works. So we have the message today. Then we have the message of the prophets. <clears throat> and mostly the, the prophets were... Uh, they would come along, God would raise up prophets, like you take Isaiah, and he would prophesy the things that would happen. Also, uh, would tell them that if they didn't smarten up, uh, terrible things would happen to them. They would be cut off and so on. We, If you look at, uh, when we look at the five cycles of punishment that we read of in uh, Leviticus 26, uh, you know, I mean, I never understood the five cycles of punishment and my my whole my whole Christian life. And we see that, you know, Israel was there was a progression that was that they were going through and progressively that they would be finally cut off out of the land. So we have the message of the prophets. So we're just going to put them we're not going to. We're not going to uh, pull any one prophet out. We're just going to, what we're, what we're looking at is the progression of God's communication to man on earth. Now, <laughs> do we see from this time on here, we have to put a line here because we see now that there's the Gentiles the Gentiles are down here, and Israel's up here. So there's a distinction, there's a division between Israel and the rest of the world, the rest of the Gentiles. So then we come to the message of the prophets, and, you know, they would tell them, like, if you look at Isaiah, Isaiah, as you know, is made up of 66 chapters and uh after chapter 39 isaiah then you get some of the the good things that uh, were promised to israel and and then we look at the psalms and the many prophecies concerning the lord jesus christ the messianic psalms uh, which will reiterate some of the things that were spoken to to david uh, you just look at Isaiah, uh, sorry, uh, let's just read Psalm 2 together for a minute. And we read these beautiful words. Why do the heathen rage? Why do the people imagine a vain thing? 
The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder, cast away their cords. So right in those three verses, you see the, the first advent of Christ. Then we see uh, verse 4, he that sitteth in heaven shall laugh, the Lord shall have them in derision. And uh, I have set my king upon the holy hill of Zion. So we see that that's what is that's what the prophets saw they they saw what we call two mountain peaks of of history they saw the first coming of christ and then christ coming to set up his kingdom uh so keep that in the back of your mind uh let's now look at uh the next great uh, event so uh, let's read together. Uh, let's, let's read in one of the Gospels. Uh, uh, let's look at Mark 1. That's probably the best place to look. Mark chapter 1. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written as it is written in the prophets. You know, we could talk about the King James Bible issue, but anyways, just make note that it's prophets. It's plural. Behold, I will send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the, the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. Uh, so we see another communication. John the Baptist. So we see this progression through history. and. Well, wow. that's prophets. Okay. <laughs> uh, so John the Baptist comes and he and he has a message. And the message is that uh, he's baptizing for the remission of sins. He's preaching the kingdom uh, is at hand. And as Eric, I always like how Eric says, the at hand phase of the kingdom. And uh, this is, uh, if you read in, uh, let's let's turn to Matthew three, verse uh, one and two. Matthew three, verse one and two. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, "Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand." And when we think of what the Lord Jesus Christ said concerning. Uh, concerning him uh let's look at luke chapter 7 luke chapter 7 verse 28 luke 7 verse 28 for i say unto you among those that are born of women there is not a greater prophet than john the baptist there is not a greater prophet than john the baptist so if you notice in my chart uh we didn't i i just kept going right we went from moses david prophets john the baptist uh we didn't i didn't stop to put a, a white page between <laughs> a blank white page between the new testament and the old testament you know like in most of our bible um see mine's got a a white blank page <laughs> and but we can see that the Lord just said there's no greater prophet than John the Baptist. So there's no real new message being preached when we come into the uh, into quote unquote the New Testament, right? And this is when you come into right division, you start looking at that verse like we read we'll talk about that about the many but let's look at hebrews 10 and this was 
when Elizabeth and I were studying together and we started understanding, you know, like when you would think uh, in churchianity, they make it out like the Lord Jesus was out preaching, you know, having tent meetings like, uh, you know, Billy Graham or something, right? But there's not a Gentile in sight. Let's look at that at, at Matthew 10, verse 5. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, and enter ye not, but go ye rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and preach, and as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So we see the Lord Jesus Christ. Preaching the same message and continuing on where John the Baptist had announced. So really there's there's nothing changed. And you know, we come to a verse like John 3:16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And let's look at John. And the other thing, too, what was everlasting life for a Jew? The everlasting life that they were looking forward to was everlasting life in a kingdom. Uh, you know, a, and I, I was, you, you were probably brought up this way, too, that, oh, when an Israelite looked at, when the Israelite looked at that Passover lamb, they look forward to the cross. Well, when, as we learned yesterday in our study, when the Lord told, told the disciples that he was going to Jerusalem to die, Peter said, be it far from thee, Lord. I mean, they weren't looking forward to the cross, and they were right there. So when we look at John 3, he that believeth on him, verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he has not believed in the death, burial, and resurrection of the only begotten Son of God. It does not say that in verse 18. It says, he that believeth on him is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son and as a young person i mean john was my go-to book you know if you had to go open air preaching or something with you know with the guys you know you grab a verse out of john and boy you know you preach your heart out uh but you'd always end up you know tacking on paul's gospel at the end right uh look at the purpose that john was writing john 20 verse 31 but these are written that you might that believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and believing you may have life, how? Through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ? No, it says that you might have life through his name. So yesterday we did a, a, a study on Peter. So let's, let's look at... Oh, I got a little bit left here, Peter. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Well, first of all, let's look at Acts chapter 1. And I always find this very interesting in, in verse 6. Uh, Acts 1, verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So the 12 who are going to go out and preach, they've had, what, 40 days with the Lord? And this is the question they come up with. So as right dividers, we look at this and we go, that's perfectly fine. I mean, there's nothing's changed, right? I mean, 
they're continuing on with what the Lord had told them. Go ye not uh, only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 8 of chapter 1. But ye shall receive power, and after that the Holy Ghost shall come, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and then unto the other most parts of the earth. So it's just continuing on. Abraham, Moses, David, the prophets, John the Baptist, Jesus, Peter. And so when you come and understand that when you come to the four Gospels, it's a continuation of prophecy. It's a continuation. The greatest prophet of all time, the Lord Jesus tells us, was John the Baptist. Greater than Ezekiel, greater than, than Isaiah, all these great prophets that came to Israel. This is the greatest prophet. Why? Because he said, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John chapter 1. Now, we can learn beautiful, wonderful things. In fact, the Gospels for my wife and I have opened up more now that we have not a spiritualizing understanding, but this spiritual understanding of what is happening in the four Gospels. And as right dividers, and if you're new to right division, uh, this is the part that kind of gets you excited because now you start thinking, wow, uh, I can I can understand this. I can I can get a grasp of this, right? So so uh, the message of Peter and the twelve, and then we come to uh, the sad part of Israel's history, right? Uh, Acts 7. And we see there that the message preached by, well, let, sorry, you know, I got to go back. Okay. I, I, I got to just keep focus on my, what I wanted to say. Let's just look a little bit at what uh, uh, Peter was preaching. My wife says, now don't get off onto something. Finish your thought. Okay. So. Let's finish our thought. Let's look at Acts 2, verse 14. And Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken unto it to my words. Uh, verse 16. This is that new gospel that I'm going to preach unto you. It doesn't say that. Verse 16 says, but this is that which was spoken by what? Back to the prophets, by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass and so on. Uh, verse 21, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 22, ye men of Israel. And all you Gentiles, <laughs> not a Gentile in sight, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved to God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not be, uh, possible that he should be holden of it. For David. So we got the prophet. Now he's going to quote David. David speaketh concerning him. I foresaw the Lord always before my face, and so on. Uh, There, verse 30, therefore being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with him with an oath uh, that uh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. What did we learn? The Davidic covenant. He's quoting the Davidic covenant. He's seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither was his soul, uh, neither did his flesh seek, seek corruption. This Jesus had God raised up where are, we are all witnesses. 
verse 34, for David. You see, it, it, it's all to do with Israel. It's all to do with this whole prophetic program, right? And then our Acts 2, and I, you know, I mean, I, <laughs> you know, I remember as a, you know, a guy in my 30s, you know, giving a little word of ministry or whatever in our local assembly, you know, about the the birth of the church here and how that, you know, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. You know, and I thought, whoa, okay, apostles' doctrine. Well, which apostles? And I remember reading the commentary saying, well, it was mostly the early apostles and then a little bit of uh, Paul thrown in. Well, I mean, Paul wasn't even saved here. I mean, it's Acts 2. So anyway, uh, and, you know, it's amazing how they stopped there because, you know, they sold their possessions and part to every man and all that sort of thing. They continued daily. Verse 46, they continued daily with one accord in the local Baptist church, breaking bread. No, it says they continued daily with one accord in the temple. Still oriented to Israel, still oriented to the prophecies. So we see that really nothing has changed except the, the main fact that Peter now is preaching the resurrection of Christ, added to what Christ was here, died, and now he rose again. And you notice the message. Uh, verse 37, it says, they were pricked in their heart of chapter 2, and they said unto Peter and to the rest, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus, sorry, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and ye shall received the gift of the holy ghost so he what he's still he's still preaching baptism the message that it's not a good news message it's a message of indictment against israel ye men ye have taken and with wicked hands have crucified and slain and that was the message uh that they crucified him and there to repent. Now notice the order. And of course, if we are going to be Bible believers and believe your King James Bible and believe what the words say, it says, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, I mean, you can't, that's what the words say. And where to believe the words on the page. Now, go over to uh, chapter 3. So the message, Peter is preaching again. Uh, verse 14, uh, sorry, verse 13. You men of Israel, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, he's including himself in the audience, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, again an indictment against them, denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let them, ye denied the Holy One and just and desired a murder to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God has raised up from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. So, Verse 18, but those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer and has so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, be converted. Now notice the wording again. That your sins may be blotted out. When? When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Verse 21, whom heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his 
holy prophets since the world began. It's not, it's, it, it, it wasn't hidden. For Moses truly, Moses, boy, we're, we hit the, we hit the prophets, we hit David, now we're hitting Moses. You know, so nothing has, you know, we're already into Acts 2. We've gone through all the four Gospels. Have we heard the Gospel of the grace of God? Well, you know, friends, Acts 2 friends will say to us, they'll say, well, John chapter 1, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. John 1, 17. Well, anything that comes from God is grace, right? And the grace that was going to be shown to Israel, remember the verse that we read together? Let's go back to Matthew 20 now. Now that we understand about the prophets and so on, Matthew 20, verse 28, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered under, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So who are the many? Well, uh, if you can't act, if you can't answer it, then you make up an answer. So our covenant Calvinistic friends will say, well, you see, he only died for those that he chose to save, right? No, when you look at it and understand it spiritually and what is spiritually happening here, that Christ is coming to uh, establish his kingdom, who are the many? Well, we read that back in, in, in Exodus 19 that there were going to be a kingdom of priests, uh, that they would mediate for the rest of the world, that uh, they would go out eventually and win over the gentiles well the many is israel that's who he came to die for at this point in time to give his life a ransom for many now out of that many then uh then the gentiles would be reached and i think this is where we have to remember that that was god's plan it was always to reach out to the gentiles was always to use Israel as the vehicle to reach the Gentiles. But they were, uh, the Gentiles were set aside and Israel were, was raised up uh, to accomplish what God had uh, had uh, had for them to do. Now, we come to the uh, stoning of Stephen. And uh, so the message uh, of the 12, and we'll say Peter, but the 12 as well. Uh, he, the, res the resurrection of Christ, their sins will be blotted out when, when the times of refreshing shall come. Uh, and when, when we think of, as we talked about yesterday, I don't want to re go over old ground, but when we come to the Hebrew tribulation epistles, uh, who were Peter, James, and John writing to? Again, they're picking up the threads of the prophecy program. And, you know, Israel was headed. They knew uh, that the tribulation was coming. That's why they sold all that they had. But we see this, this act that took place in, in uh, Acts 7 when they stoned Stephen. And again, when when we when we look at Stephen's uh, his his sermon, if we can call it a sermon, his preaching here, uh, again, chapter two of verse seven, he said, "Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken, the God of glory appeared unto our father, Abraham." So he starts right back here. And as you go through it, you'll he 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 goes through their history. Uh, chapter 9, we didn't talk about Joseph, but he talks about Joseph. Uh, in verse 8, he talks about Abraham begetting Isaac, then Jacob, uh, the 12 patriarchs, and so on. Uh, and then he, he, he talks about, verse 20, he talks about Moses. So again, it's all the prophecy program, still geared to uh, Israel and Israel starting at Jerusalem, 
and then Samaria, uh, Judea, then Samaria, right? And that's what the plan was. Uh, you see, as you, as we go down uh, this this portion, verse sixty says he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, "Lord, lay not the sin to their charge." And when he had said thus, he fell asleep. But in verse fifty six, we see something very, uh, you know wonderful in one way behold i see the heavens opened and the son of man standing on the right hand of god and the lord was not standing to receive a martyr he was standing uh, judgment was going to fall but we see in chapter 8 uh, this man Saul, who was consenting unto his death in chapter verse one of chapter eight, and persecuted the church. Now again, which church? You know, the word church, and I'm not going to use the Greek. In my old days, I would have said the Greek word for church, but we don't need to do that because we can understand from the scripture that this was the little flock. This was the remnant church. This was the uh, church, uh, the Hebrew church. And we see that Saul, verse 3, made havoc of the church, entering into every house, hailing men and women, committed them to prison. So, verse chapter 9. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, so on. And as he journeyed, verse Verse 3, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Verse 5, who art thou, Lord? The Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished and probably like, whoa, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said, Unto him, arise and go into the city, and it should be told the other. So we see there's something happening here. Now, I am not on this chart going to put Paul up here. We're going to go, we're going to make a, a little detour and put Paul here. And we said all this tonight to give an overview of right division, how that God had spoken to Adam. He spoke to Noah. He wipes out uh, the earth, uh, everyone except for eight souls uh, on, on the ark. And he starts over with Noah. Uh, and then he calls out Abraham. And from Abraham on, we have all this and I'm going to go right over to the end of, you know, we usually go, we usually as right dividers will, will say, you know, this is the part of the Bible that is for us. But look at that part of the Bible, all that and all that. And this is ours. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. We see Paul saved here. There is a different message. There is something new. There is something that, uh, as Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, let's look, let's look at Romans 16 first, verse 25. Now, when you first come into right division, there's kind of like anchor verses you want to commit to memory right away. And I would suggest that this is one of them. Romans 16, verse 25. Now, to him that is a power to establish you, 
according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. And right away, uh, you should link this in your mind, anchor these as right dividers, uh, the verse we read in Acts 3, verse 21, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since, since the world began, that he spoke from all his prophets, right? All his holy prophets since the world began. And, and get that anchored in your mind as right dividers. Prophets since the world began, that's Acts 3, 21, Romans 6, 25, which according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. So let's go to 1 Corinthians. So what is this, what is a mystery? What is this that Paul is talking about? So 1 Corinthians chapter 2. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before, before the world unto our glory. So A wisdom is something that is hid. It's not like an Agatha Christie novel or a, a, a or a Sherlock Holmes novel, a mystery where something you find something out in the end. No, a mystery is hidden wisdom of God that is revealed at what an appropriate time dispensationally. So. There's nothing wrong with the word dispensation. And you get it in a King James Bible. When Paul uses uh, the word dispensation, uh, you know, we taught, like, you probably learn if you're, if you're any, you know, any type of dispensationalist in your past, you know, you'll learn about the seven dispensations. You'll see that in, Schofield's Bible and, and so on. Uh, some will say it's a period of time. It's not a period of time. It's the way that God is dispensing information at particular times. So information was dispensed to Adam. Information was dispensed to Noah. Build an ark. We're not all about building an ark. Well, unless you're that fellow down in the... <laughs> Yeah, and I tell you, he probably had a lot of Black and Decker and DeWalt tools to build that, but I don't think Noah did. Uh, anyway, sorry. Uh, Ray, uh, so he he got the covenant of the rainbow. Abraham called Moses. We see him delivering the children of Israel out, uh, God's son, uh, David, and, and just a just a quickie. When we read that in, in uh, Exodus about his son, my son Israel, the Lord Jesus Christ is the begotten son of God, right? Okay. Uh, David was given information. His throne would be forever. The prophet. All this information was dispensed at different times. Remember the verse that we started with? God, who at sundry times in diverse manners spake, uh, in time past under the prophets, right? So it, this dispensing of information right up to Peter. And we see that this there's nothing changed. I mean, there's change, but it's still working towards an earthly kingdom. Then we have Paul that is saved. He's, a, he's an apostle born out of due time. Let's look at... Uh, 1 Corinthians 15. 
1 Corinthians 5, uh, that he was seen of see, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 5, and he was seen of Cephas. And we, we talked about this yesterday. Peter. And then what does it say at the end? Uh, it says that uh, in verse 8, and last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. So if you're coming into right division and you're 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 learning these things and it's an exciting time i must say the first you know i'm not that it's still not an exciting time but the excitement as you start to understand and the scriptures unfold and you understand that we are uh, i wrote it down here because i knew I, it's a tongue twister uh why do I call myself a mid-Acts Pauline dispensational King James Bible-believing right divider? And why do I why do we call ourselves that? Because we understand that the Apostle Paul is our apostle, the apostle to the Gentiles. Uh, I have some verses here I wanted to share with you. Um Okay, 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11. And this message that was given to Paul, uh, well, before I, I go to Corinthians 11, I'll, I got to say this, because, you know, this is being recorded, and some, you know, hope maybe somebody will be listening to it, and we just we want to make sure we get everything right. Um, let's just let's so what 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 happened to Israel like somebody will ask that okay so when you come to the the book of Romans which is the anchor of our doctrine Paul answers this and he goes through and if you kind of remember you know as you start doing this longer you start thinking you start understanding okay Romans 1 to 6 Romans 9 to 11, right? Romans 9 to 11 is explaining what happened to Israel. So let's look at uh, Romans 11. Romans 11, verse 11. But I say, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. Now, this is very important to understand a right division or rightly dividing but rather through their fall salvation is come is come unto the gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the gentiles how much more their fullness i speak to you gentiles inasmuch as i am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. So what's happened? Well, they stumbled and then they fell. They stumbled at the cross. They fell at the stoning of Stephen. So what, what, is, what is Paul preaching? What is he saying? He is saying that salvation is coming directly to the world, not through what God had planned through Israel, but he gave a message to Paul and dispensed the message to him that salvation would come to the whole world apart from Israel, apart from Israel. So many in churchianity will say, oh, well, then we were replaced Israel. We're spiritual Israel. We'll, you know, not, no. Look at verse 29 of the same chapter 11. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. In other words, that verse shows us the immutability of God that once he promises something, he doesn't take it back. But God in his wisdom 
looked at the cross and we know that certain things that happened at the cross. Christ said, this is my blood of the New Testament, right? Which is, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Paul looks at it and is given this message of reconciliation. And we read, as we read over in 1 Timothy, what does it say there? It says, who would have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So this is put on hold. And let's flip the chart over. Ugh. On the back, my wife drew this for me. So I, on the other chart, we tried to build up from the beginning, of starting in Adam. But now I think this chart helps us a little more. So this is the diminishing of Israel. This is Christ from heaven. This is the but now. So when you come to your, your book of Ephesians, again, another anchor that you should get in your, in your mind as right dividers and as if you're trying to share with people, right? Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein time passed. And then you look down uh, the chapter, uh, verse 13. But now, verse 13 of chapter 2. And then uh, uh, verse 7, ages to come. So we have time passed. But now, the ages to come. A very simple uh, view of what is happening, uh, a whole panoramic, panoramic view. This is grace and peace. This is where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. We have something here that is, is new, the body of Christ, the new creature. The mystery, something that was, was as it said there, the uh, verse, uh, well, let's read chapter 3 of, of uh, Ephesians while we're there. For this, I, for this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God. So again, a biblical word, dispensation of the grace of God, which has given me to you were how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery remember we learned what a mystery was in, in first timothy chapter two whereby when you read you understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ for in the in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles prophets by the spirit that the gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ by my, by the gospel. Uh, and so what is what is our purpose? What is the goal today? What, what is the will of God? Verse 9, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, remember this again, which was hidden, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God. So, When you think of where we are today, we started by reading those words, God has spoken. Well, what a, I mean, when we look at this, God has spoken. He has is, he is called the apostle of the Gentiles, Paul. He, he has spoken to him. Let's look at Galatians. I'm trying to give you like all the high points of, of right division. Uh, 
verse verse uh, 11 of Galatians 1. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. So it's not, well, I flipped the chart over. So it's, it's not to do with anything that the prophets or anybody was preaching. Neither I received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Uh, verse 16, to reveal his son in me that I might preach among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither when I went up to Jerusalem to them that were apostles before me. So it's not, it's not start at Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. Paul, get out. He's heading, he's heading out of Jerusalem. And we read there that uh, he didn't go up. Uh, he went into Arabia and returned unto Damascus. And after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter. So it was all by revelation. There was nothing that uh, when, when chapter 2, verse 6, uh, but who seemed to be somewhat whatsoever they were make no matter to me. But they who seemed to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. They added nothing to Paul. Paul added to them. He he helped them to understand what was happening. That's why when you read in Second Peter, what, what Peter writes, the long sufferingness of God. But we see that. Uh, this was given by revelation directly uh, to Paul. So let's go back to uh, the verse I was going to read before I, I fill all that in. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, First Corinthians chapter 11. Be followers of me, even as I am also of Christ. Now, if anybody says to us that we're Paul worshipers or uh, exalting Paul above Christ, nonsense. What we are acknowledging about the Apostle Paul is that there was a message given directly from the risen Christ to Paul of the mystery, the gospel that was preached apart from Israel, apart anything to do with Israel and the, the kingdom, and that a new creature was being formed. And that new creature is the body of Christ. God had, remember we read my, my firstborn son, Israel, the creation of the nation of Israel, the creature. But now we have a new creature, a new creation. And remember we read Genesis 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Well, all that part of the Bible was all to do with how God was going to bring dominion back to Christ, the head, that Adam relinquished in the garden. But in the mind of God, the heavens still needed to be cleansed. And we see that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so we see that Paul writes in uh, Ephesians let's read verse 20 of Ephesians chapter 1 which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places Far above all principality and power and might and dominion, every name that is named, not only in this world, but that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things 
to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all and all. Verse 5 of chapter 2. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. By, by grace are you saved and hath raised us up together and made us to sit in heavenly places, not earthly places, heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And remember, you know, this was, a, Elizabeth and I were, when we were studying a couple of years ago, this this verse in Ephesians 1 just hit me. It's like, wow, the whole Bible is contained in this one verse, verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, way out here, that he might gather together and one all things in Christ, Christ, both which are in heaven, the heavenly places and in and which are on the earth, even in him, in him, in Christ. You know, that, that sums up the whole Bible. And you know, at when when Christ comes in the rapture and the church is caught up, then the prophecy program will start to continue again. Uh, this middle wall that went, went down, the middle wall will be back up. There'll be a difference between Jew and Gentile. But, you know, we're living in a, such a wonderful age of amnesty. God is not imputing sin right now. This is a time that people can be saved. And, uh, you know, it, I just find it marvelous when I read uh, verses, verse 12 of chapter 2. Well, let's read verse 11. Wherefore, remember, <laughs> and Paul's saying, remember you Ephesians, like remember this, and may we never forget this, that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who were called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Strike two. Strangers from the covenants of promise. Strike three. Having no hope. Strike four. And without God in the world. Strike five. But now. But now in Christ Jesus. Ye who are sometimes far off were made nigh by the blood of Christ. So. We come through this. We, we come from Genesis. We travel all the way through the history of the Old Testament, very quickly, we come to the uh, end of Acts, and we go from Romans to Philemon, we have the wonderful word of reconciliation, the wonderful word of the gospel, gospel of the mystery of Christ, we have the wonderful word that was given to Paul by revelation, and we have the opportunity today to be saved, by the grace of God. Where sin did abound, he writes, grace did much more abound. You know, Paul wrote these beautiful words in, in Romans 5. And I mean, they're just, sorry, I, I, I didn't realize the time. But God, ver, Romans 5, 8, but God commended his love toward us. And that why while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I mean, imagine gentile dogs and christ came his love was commended to us and that he died for us so when we get when we finally get over to hebrews this is a good place to end i just asked you is there anything for us in hebrews look let's read the verse again God, who has sundered times and diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Is that us? We just read in Galatians, uh, sorry, in Ephesians, <laughs> that we were without Christ, without aliens from the commonwealth of it, strangers from covenants. Hebrews is written to Hebrews. 
And the book of Hebrews will be for those saints, uh, uh, Jewish saints and believers going through the time of the tribulation. And Hebrews to Revelation is for them. But for us today, Romans through Philemon is, is our doctrine to us and about us. The rest of the Bible is for us. And we can learn, as we've learned tonight, we've taken basically the whole counsel of God. God has spoken to us. And we don't have to do, you know, the old Bible bingo, right? We don't have to all oh, read a psalm today and, you know, uh, maybe God will tell me something today. No, we can go to our, our apostle. We can go to the epistles that were written to us and we can learn uh, the doctrine that we need for today. And it's amazing when you look at the 13 epistles of, of Paul, they are packed with doctrine, just packed with doctrine. I mean, you know, just going over the, I said to Elizabeth, I said, I think the book of Romans is getting worn out in my Bible. I started this Bible a few years ago, and it's like, wow. Anyway, so I just hope this helps you and encourages you. If if those of us who've been doing this a little bit of time, uh, it'll encourage us. You know, uh, my dear brother, Jerry who's been doing it for many, many years, and dear brother Clint, you know, that it just may warm our hearts that we can glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ and uh, to know that our eternity is settled and our whole eternity is based on the word of God the word that cannot lie, the word that cannot change. It's unalterable. And what God has said for Israel is immutable, it's unchanging. They will eventually get their kingdom. Uh, they will eventually get their sins blotted out. But we now have the atonement. We now have our sins forgiven. We are now are saved. We are now made to be seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And this is the wonderful word of reconciliation that we have and can share with others to see all men saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So hopefully that'll help us uh, and in understanding of, of where uh Right division helps us to understand where we are in the plan of God at this time. So let's just close in a word of prayer and then uh, we'll say good night. Father, we just thank thee once again for this time that we can spend together looking into thy word. Uh, Father, we know that we're feeble and we stutter and stammer, but we thank thee that our souls are saved and that those on the call tonight on the zoom call we can all say that we know our sins forgiven and a home in heaven so we just thank thee for the word we thank thee for thy word that has been preserved we thank thee that we can have confidence in it and we thank thee that our eternity is based on everything that we read in this work in this in this book so we just thank thee once again for those and the interest in the word of god in the name of thy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Ernie. That was awesome. Yes. Thank, Thank you, Ernie. Thank you, Ernie. Thanks, Ernie. Thank you, Ernie. Thank you, Ernie, very much. Very well. Excellent. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Ernie. Thank you. Good night. See you Wednesday, Ernie. Good night. Bye. 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 If thanks, Ernie. Wants to... I can't get my camera to work, but thanks, Ernie. <laughs> okay, Donya, thanks. You're That's welcome. Awesome. Thank you, Ernie. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, Wayne. Good night. Thank you, Ernie. It was great, Ernie. Thank you so Oh, wait. Okay. Uh... I got it. Okay, so take care, everybody. Wow.